Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Professor Asif Qureshi and you are watching Dr. Asif Lectures. Today I welcome you in another very important video on renal pharmacology and the topic today is angiotensin 2 receptor blockers. Now as the name indicates, these are the blockers and what are they going to block? Angiotensin 2 receptors. Okay, so that is something that uh, you can have an idea on what we are talking about. Now, before starting this topic, I will one more time tell you that you must watch my video where I have explained the physiology of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And then I also uploaded a video which is called ACE inhibitors. If you do not watch those two videos, this will be difficult for you to understand this lecture. But if you watch those videos first and then come to this video, this is going to be a piece of cake because I have in detail explained the physiology of renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And then in detail, I have explained how do ACE inhibitors work because if you understand how the ACE inhibitors work, you will easily understand angiotensin 2 receptor blockers, okay? Now, let me one more time for your ease refresh the concept, okay? So, the concept was from liver, there was a molecule called angiotensinogen, which is converted into angiotensin 1 and this happens by the release of renin. And you must remember that from where is renin released? Renin is released from the juxtaglomerular cells of your nephron. Now, all this I have explained in great detail in my physiology lecture on the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So, do watch that video, okay? So, angiotensin or gene is converted into angiotensin 1 in the presence of renin, okay? And this angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin Two. And this angiotensin 2 formation happens because of an enzyme which is present in the um, vascular epithelium of lungs. And that enzyme is known as angiotensin converting enzyme, ACE. Now, once this AT2, angiotensin 2, is developed, produced, it exerts its action. And what are the actions? The actions of angiotensin 2 are to increase blood pressure. You remember that very um clearly from my previous lectures and it also increases blood volume okay and it performs a lot of functions such as on proximal convoluted tubule to increase sodium reabsorption it also works on principal cells for example to reabsorb sodium and to secrete potassium okay so all those concepts are key for the understanding and then in the previous lecture where i talked about ace inhibitors i told you if ace are blocked angiotensin converting enzymes are blocked all the downstream actions are blocked okay so the blood pressure was reduced and the volume was reduced right now the same concept will apply for angiotensin 2 receptor blockers because now what we are going to do is we are not going to block ace but we are going to block angiotensin 2 but the effects will be the same whatever effects you saw in ace inhibitors will exactly be the effects that you will see in angiotensin 2 receptor blockers because in ACE inhibition you were reducing the concentration of angiotensin 2 and now by blocking the receptor think about it angiotensin 2 goes on a cell for example this is a principal cell in the uh, nephron and there is a receptor for angiotensin 2 so if you are now blocking this receptor the actions of angiotensin 2 will no more be performed okay so wherever this goes and performs an action will be blocked for example uh, there was uh, if you remember, this is the Bowman's capsule. There is the afferent arteriole, then glomerulus, and then the efferent arteriole. And there were receptors on the efferent arteriole for angiotensin 2, I told you. And this was going to perform vasoconstriction when it performs its action on this receptor. Now, if we block this receptor, the job of angiotensin 2 will not be performed. So, either you are giving ACE inhibitors or you are giving angiotensin 2 inhibitors. In both the scenarios, the downstream actions of angiotensin 2 will not be performed, okay? So, let us now begin what are ARBs, what are angiotensin receptor blockers, and the names are 
sartan so lo sartan it be sartan so whenever you see this artan family like i told you in the ace inhibitor it puts the pril family the captopril the lisinopril and allopril so pril 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 was ace inhibitors and artan 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 is the angiotensin 2 receptor blocker okay so lo sartan it be sartan they block 81 receptors now 81 receptors are basically the ones on which actually angiotensin 2 acts the receptors are called 81 receptors but the molecule acting on this is the angiotensin 2 molecule okay so it blocks the 81 receptors decreasing the activation of 81 receptors by angiotensin 2 and the pharmacologic effects are similar to those of ACE inhibitors now you understand why I was telling you that if you understand my video of ACE inhibitors you will easily understand my video on angiotensin in two receptor blockers it's like a staircase you know the staircase a staircase phenomena is something like this that if you want to go up there if you want to reach here you need to first go on to this step then from here you can go to this step and from there you will go to this step so step wise ultimately you will reach there okay if you want to go directly from here to here that will be a hassle for you therefore first step is to watch my video on renin angiotensin aldosterone physiology okay and then the second step would be to watch my video on ACE inhibitors and once you watch these two videos this video on angiotensin 2 receptor blockers will be a piece of cake for you because see the actions are similar to ACE inhibitors and I just explained you here now since I told you in my ACE inhibitor video that the actions whatever being performed by angiotensin 2 will now not be performed okay which means there will be no vasoconstriction of the efferent arteriole so there will be actually vasodilation which means that there will be no sodium reabsorption and which also means that there will be no potassium secretion which would also mean that potassium in the blood will go up so it will also cause hyperkalemia so remember all these things we discussed in uh, ACE inhibitor video okay so same thing so it produces arterial and venular uh, dilatation it blocks aldosterone secretion because you remember i told you that one of the job of angiotensin 2 is to go to adrenal cortex and from the adrenal cortex it used to release aldosterone and this aldosterone then works on the nephron cells to reabsorb sodium and to secrete potassium so the all this phenomena will be blocked because now you are blocking the aldosterone um, uh, secreting receptors which were responsive to angiotensin 2 now you are blocking the receptors okay so the overall effect effect of these drugs will be lowering the blood pressure and therefore these drugs are used in as antihypertensives okay so you lower the blood pressure you lower the salt and water retention arbs do not increase bradykinin levels now that should make sense to you because now um actually what was the job of angiotensin converting enzyme uh, of course it leads to production of angiotensin 2 82 but it also if you remember was involved in breakdown of bradykinin so when we were blocking ace inhibitors the levels of bradykinin were going up now we are not touching we are not disturbing ace we are only blocking the receptors to angiotensin 2 so bradykinin metabolism will be okay and therefore bradykinin levels will not be changed okay so they do not increase bradykinin levels therefore in those patients who whom you first prescribe ace inhibitors they develop cuff and now because of the cuff you have to stop ACE inhibitors, angiotensin 2 receptors can be a good choice. Okay, so this is one thing that you should know. Now, adverse effects are also similar to those of ACE inhibitors. Apart from that, the risk of cuff and angioedema are significantly decreased. I told you why cuff is decreased because we are now not disturbing bradykinin levels, and angioedema is also decreased. Okay, and what were the other side effects? If you remember, let me go back here 
to show you the side effects we discussed this hyperkalemia in detail that if you give these drugs they will they will have the you know potential to induce hyperkalemia why because in the cells of nephron what was the job of angiotensin 2 to reabsorb sodium and to secrete potassium remember that yeah so now and this was under the influence of this receptor and what was binding on this receptor was angiotensin 2 now we are using these drugs angiotensin 2 receptor blockers so if this is blocked sodium reabsorption will not happen potassium secretion will not happen so potassium will actually stay in the blood and this will lead to hyperkalemia okay and therefore in such patients you take care if you are prescribing high potassium diet or for example if you are using Using potassium sparing diuretics any one of these can actually increase hyperkalemia okay so these drugs cause hyperkalemia chances of dry gas are reduced in angiotensin 2 uh, blockers skin rash and angioedema chances are very much reduced hypotension can happen if there is increased dose taken okay so the side effects are also very much similar to ACE inhibitors now one important thing that angiotensin receptor blockers should not be combined with ACE inhibitors and the reason for this is if you combine this with ACE inhibitor these drugs have similar mechanism of actions and they have similar side effect profile so what will actually happen is that the action will be augmented so ACE inhibitor causes hyperkalemia angiotensin 2 receptor causes hyperkalemia both of them combined will cause severe hyperkalemia okay both of them will be causing severe hyperkalemia so the side effects will be augmented therefore these two drugs are never combined together okay again another important point if you remember from the ACE inhibitor video they were teratogenic angiotensin 2 receptor blockers are also teratogenic okay they can also uh, cause fetal anomalies if used in the pregnant women so therefore they should not be used in pregnant women now um this is the main concept of angiotensin 2 receptor blockers okay their their line of action is very much similar to ace inhibitor because ace inhibitors was upstream and angiotensin 2 is downstream if you inhibit ace angiotensin 2 levels go down if you block angiotensin 2 receptors function of angiotensin 2 cannot be performed okay side effect profile is also very much similar they can cause hypotension if used in higher quantities and they can cause hyperkalemia because of the mechanism i just told you okay so this is all about the angiotensin 2 receptor blockers and i once again tell you that watching the video on ras physiology and watching the video on ace inhibitor is a prerequisite if you watch them you watch this video this is a piece of cake for you okay then this is all for today's video i will see you again shortly in another video of high yield for your examination purpose till then take care of yourself and allah hafiz